the son of Ibrahim. The Prophet peace be upon him had designated his name many years before his birth. Ja'far meaning a river full of water. His title was Abu Abdullah and he was known by the descriptive title Sadiq meaning someone whose words align completely with the truth. His respected father was Imam Muhammad Bakr and his mother Umm Farwa was known as a pious woman of good deeds. He was born one spring morning, the 7th of Rabi'al Awal, 83 AH, in Medina, the city of the Prophet, and was brought up there. He was 31 years old when his father, Imam Bakr, peace be upon him, was martyred. This marked the beginning of his vilayat and imamate, his intellectual and practical leadership over the Islamic society, cultural and intellectual activities, the political vacuum created by the fall of the Bani Umayyah, and the preoccupation of the Bani Abbas with establishing their new government created conditions in which Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, enjoyed relatively more freedom for propagating the truth and teaching Islamic sciences and ethical behaviors. This reached a point at which he was able to train 4,000 students from different cities and countries of the time in specializations such as jurisprudence, hadith, Quranic exegesis and others. Even individuals such as Abu Hanifa, Malik ibn Anas, the founder of the Hanafi and Maliki schools of jurisprudence admitted to being students of Imam Sadiq peace be upon him. Among his Shia students were Hisham bin Hakam and Zurarat bin Ayyum. The mainstay of the Shia faith and fundamental beliefs and jurisprudence are based on his opinion and hadith in which he is referred to as Abu Abdullah. A large measure of the hadith and Islamic sciences of the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them were presented and explained by that Imam to the point that the Shia sect is known as the Jafari sect. Many important political events took place during the lifetime of Imam Sadiq including Alawi movements such as that of Zaid ibn Ali and the Abbasid movement which took place after the fall of the Umayyad government and brought about the Abbasid rule. Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, did not take part in any of these movements announcing that the time for uprising had not yet arrived. Through the efforts of Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, the Shia influence in various lands was increasing on a daily basis. The Shia lived over a widespread area with many being far from the Imam. This distance, in addition to the repressive tactics of the Umayyads, made it difficult for the Shias to keep in touch with their leader. The Imam, peace be upon him, however, came up with a plan. He appointed a representative in each of the various areas, forming what was called the Organization of Representatives. This organization carried out various responsibilities such as gathering the religious financial payments and turning them over to the Imam. Seeing to the difficulties of Shias in each area, creating a connection between the Imam and his followers and answering the religious questions. The effective concept of an organization of representations was expanded during the era of following Imams. The Imam, peace be upon him, was 65 years old and had found an unprecedented fame in the Islamic world. After the Abbasids established their rule, they gradually increased their pressure and threats against the Shias to the point that Imam's house was set on fire while he and his family were present. But it seemed that they didn't realize that Ja'far ibn Muhammad, descendant from the lineage of Ibrahim, the friend of Allah, and thus the flames of fire would never reach him. The brutish actions of the Abbasid had no effect in the face of the heroic struggles of the Imam until finally on the 25th of Shawwal, 148 AH, he was fed poisoned grapes on the order of Mansur, the Abbasid Caliph. After 34 years of leadership of Imamate, he achieved martyrdom. His pure body was buried in Baki Cemetery alongside the graves of his father and grandfather. Until the beginning of the 20th century, the shrine in which he was buried was a visitation site for many visitors until the Wahhabi destroyed it on the 8th of Shawwal, 1344 AH.